guys, we're back! And I'm sticking to a schedule for a change. Today I'm gonna bring you um, a little bit of what I've been seeing around in the web as well and I thought it'd be fun. Um, Cause I've been doing a lot of hauls so I thought I'd do the anti-haul which is everything that I'm not gonna buy especially from like recent new launches and everything like that. So just before we jump in, I'm sorry to be one of those people but make sure you subscribe and you click the little bell button to know every single time I'm uploading. Let's jump in! The first thing that I'm not gonna buy is the Naked Heat palette. First of all, it's not that much of an original palette even though it is kind of a change for the Naked palettes in general. It, it does make sense and I do get where they're coming from um, but it just feels like there's something missing. It's too much of the same between all of the colors and I just feel like this doesn't add anything to my collection personally. Like a lot of people I also wish there was like a brighter orange that would kind of make something funner. But yeah overall it's just very boring to me like almost all of like I can say all of the Naked palettes. Another thing that I'm not gonna buy is the Aurora Glow Kit. Now I have the Moonchild Glow Kit and I love it, absolutely love it. I do use them every once in a while and they're fun for creating like highlighter shades in your eyes. But I feel like the Aurora one took it a step too far and they're no longer highlighters, they're just plain like eyeshadows that are way too pigmented for you to wear as a highlighter. and. I wouldn't realistically use that uh, on a daily basis unless it was some kind of like special video and for that I'd probably just go ahead and use my eyeshadows as a highlighter so for me that's I'm a little weird but that's a little too weird. Another thing that I'm not gonna buy and everyone's really really excited about is the Becca uh, Chrissy Teigen palette and I get that people are really excited because it's Becca and because it's Chrissy Teigen but um it's just so boring! Have you looked at it? It's just, it brings nothing new to the table. Nothing new that Becca hasn't already done and that every single other brand on the planet hasn't already done. And so for me, it's just like, no. You know what? No. Next, I have a lot of makeup. So if I'm gonna give you my money from now on, it has to be something special. And we're just talking highlighters here. I feel like highlighters have been so, so done that even like, Every single thing that has come out recently I feel like I don't want to buy because I have something like that already in my collection. From now on I just think that any highlighter, um, it has to be a freaking hybrid motherfucking special shit for me to buy, otherwise I'm not gonna. And that involves the Kylie Jenner highlights, the Huda Beauty highlights, any other highlight that Becca releases, um, I'm not gonna buy the uh, Anastasia Beverly Hills lip palette. If you're a makeup artist, that palette kind of makes sense. If you're a regular person, what the fuck do you need that for? Every time you're gonna retouch your lipstick, it's gonna be like, well, let's get this out of my bag and just, you know, start mixing the shades in my hand first and then, no. I am not gonna buy those Artiste brushes or anything that looks like that because first, I think the only ones that do attract me are for face and for face, I'd really just ha rather have my beauty blender anyway. But the, the eye ones, they look very messed up. They don't look comfortable at all and I just don't know. And in that train of thought, I'm not gonna buy any silicone sponge, no. just. I've never tried it but I just look at it and I just know it's not gonna work because it's, it's not gonna like blend in, it's just gonna slap the product on. Even the EV Blender, it is silicone, it is not something that mimics, I mean I know they say that mimics your skin texture but it has no bounce, it has no, because it has no powder of absorption, it also has no powder of like blending in seamlessly as the beauty blender does if that makes sense so any kind of non-spongy sponge not gonna buy them but i also think i'm not gonna buy the upcoming kat von d metallic lipsticks because they're liquid lipsticks and they look really pretty but they look really chunky and really like heavy and i hope i'm wrong but i'm just not gonna buy them because they don't look comfortable at all and i'm also not gonna buy that clarisonic moving foundation brush because it, it just I don't like the Clarisonic brushes anyway the cleansing ones and it just doesn't 
it it doesn't make sense. I don't know how it works. I don't know if it swirls around. If it swirls around, then it just doesn't make, doesn't make any sense. If it doesn't, then you'll have to swirl it around, which doesn't make any sense. And lastly, we're gonna kind of talk about branding and things in general. So, like, I'm not gonna buy any collabs with beauty gurus, like anything that is done with the likes of Jaclyn Hill, Manny MUA, blah, 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 blah. Not gonna do it because most of the time, I just don't like those people at all. I, mean, I think there are a few exceptions, but for the most part, the top beauty gurus, as they like to call themselves, are really, really fake and horrible people. And I just, it turns me off the brand, honestly. But in the same sentence, I feel like those collabs are so hyped up that they get hyped up to a sense that it's unreal. And then eventually it has to disappoint you. I'm not gonna buy from Jeffree Star and I'm not gonna buy from Lime Crime. And I've never bought from Jara Cosmetics, but I also don't wanna. I just feel like there's a lot of brands that have a lot of controversy and I get that. I mean, and sometimes most of the drama is just over drama it's over talked about and some things got thrown out of context okay you know i said some stupid shit people say stupid shit and it just got blown out of proportion but i feel like these three specific brands and maybe others that i don't know about there's just a line that they cross that i cannot seem to come back from for lime crime specifically as uh not like the money um, hacking thing, because that's something that could happen to anyone. I just feel like the owner, Dodi, there's a lot of rumors about her, and that instantly puts me off, because why would so many people bring up different stories of her being really shady and shit? But it could happen, so I'm not gonna judge her on that. I'm gonna judge her on comments that I've seen personally from the Lime Crime account and from her own account, and she just doesn't come across as a very nice person and she's very um, obnoxious and like so I am the best and you are like peasant to me. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, just uh, Google Lime Crime Scandal and you have a few hours of entertainment for yourself. Uh, from Jeffree Star specifically, there's a lot of like racist background which I don't like and he never formally apologized for and that bugs me a little bit but it's not even about that because people change he should have apologized but you know what people change but it's still the way he still treats his fans and his clients and uh these are things that i didn't read like off a blog i i've seen them personally i've seen his own comments i've seen videos of him and snapchats of him throwing like so much hate at people that were doing nothing wrong and he just misunderstood the situation. I just don't like the way he carries himself about those things. And a lot of people say, but if the product's good, then I'm just not that kind of person. It really turns me off the brand. And his products are really good in general. Lime Crime has good products as well, but I just cannot, you know, justify to myself giving money off to those people because just, no. And Gerard Cosmetics was all about that Manny MUA thing. I don't like him personally. I don't like the way he carries himself as well in line. The whole Gerard Cosmetics uh, drama was a little unnecessary. I don't think I'm as opposed to buying from them as I am from buying from the other two. But at the same time, there's just so many options. They're not bringing anything out of this world that I would die to have so that I would go there. So... And the last thing I'm not gonna buy from is Kylie Cosmetics. Reason being is that I think they're, again, way overhyped. And uh, from what I read from people, they're way overpriced for the quality. They are raving about like, oh my God, Kylie Jenner. But they're not buying like, oh my God, this is such good quality. Um, if that was the case, I would buy it anyway, even though I'm not a huge fan of hers. But that's not the case and I feel like everything I hear from people who are not major fans is that the products are overpriced and so I'm not gonna go in that direction. And that's where I'm gonna end, end off today. If I miss any of the recent new launches, please comment down below and I'll answer if I would buy it or not. And let's start this conversation. What would you not buy? And also from the products that I mentioned, do you have any that you kind of think, well, you know what girl, you should buy it and you're wrong. You can say that down below as well. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel for more and click the little bell button so you can know every single time that I post. And follow me on Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, and Facebook. Bye, I love you. See you next one.